11, uh, 04. Um, it's 11.04, so I'm going to uh, call this meeting to order. According to Secretary, can you please take roll? Board Member Anderson? Present. Board Member Futrell? Here. Board Member Renteria is absent. Board Member Rumble is absent. However, Board Member Myers is present um, and will uh, fill in, uh, is the alternate for Board Member Rumble. Chair Rivero? Yeah. Uh, let the record reflect that all board members are present with the exception of board member Renteria and board member Rumble. Thank you. All right, moving on to item two is public comment. So this is a time when any person may address matters not listed on this agenda, but which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. Do any members of the public who wish to make comments on items not listed on the agenda? Chair Rivera, we don't have any uh, attendees in person. We don't have any attendees via Zoom. Thank you, Reporting Secretary. Uh, we'll move on to item three, which is the approval of the minutes from our August 10th, 2023 meeting. We have minutes from the August 2023 meeting. Do we have any changes to the minutes? I'll move approval of the minutes. I'll second. So all, well, we, yeah. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Minutes approved. Um, and then just so you guys know, we don't need to vote on the minutes. Right, yeah, that's what I mean. Um, so Sorry. Chair Rivero, if you could just make a statement saying that the minutes are approved as submitted. Then the minutes are approved as submitted. Perfect. Right, thank you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to belabor this. It does say approval of minutes. How do we Correct. approve it without taking a vote? Um, I reached out to the city attorney's office a while ago. To be honest, I don't remember off the top of my head all of the logistics, um, but we don't need to take a vote on them. Um, if there are amendments, then you can, anybody can state these are the changes and then they just become approved as amended. Um, but we don't need to take a vote. Odd. I've been at this a long time, never heard of that before. But anyway, whatever yeah. it is, it doesn't hurt to take a vote. And yeah, so this came up, uh, this is something new too, and I think it's also having to do with post-COVID, but we should get some, uh, the language from the city clerk's office as to why exactly we're no longer need to approve the minutes. But, so. Odd. All right, so thank you. Uh, moving on to item 4.0 or 4. I think, or 4. <laughs> New business. Uh, we got 4.1 event support report, and um, this item is going to be presented by uh, member uh, Myers, who is the uh, VP of Marketing and Communications for Business Santa Rosa. And basically, I had a requested uh, member Myers to provide more of a detailed report of the 13 uh, events that were supported throughout the first part of the funding cycle through uh, the event support program and totaling uh, close to $83,000. So she'll go ahead and provide some more details about those events that happened. Yeah, so I pulled together um, the recap that I have. Um, can I see that annual report? Oh, I can get it. Just put pulled together some of the, the the main topics that I thought would be most relevant to those of you here. Um, so he says eighty two thousand. Some of these were from last year, though, um, like the winter blast, um, Beer City, and Pino on the River. Those were actually in Q4 of last year on when he says 80,000. So that's why my totals are a little bit less because they're just for the calendar year 2023. Um, so I just pulled together all the event recaps and um, gave the number of attendees for each event, um, how much we awarded um, and how much they requested as well, event dates, and then what they used the funds for. Um, one of the things that I 
kind of realized after going through this process, we had we have Lindsay um, Musco who's helped us get all these processed um, in the beginning of the year before she went on maternity leave. And she did a great job. It was the first year that we've done it this way. Um, so kudos to her for that. Um, and then, you know, as I look through the event support um, recaps, there's just, you know, some things that I think I'd like to improve on it for next year and for this next round, which is actually due in a couple of days, the 30th. Um, you know, just having uh, the event promoters give us a little bit more detail on the overnight stays, I think would be um, beneficial because we don't require it in the event recaps. We just kind of ask, you know, did you partner with hotels? How did you partner with them? How many attendees, um, you know, and, and uh, zip codes that they can provide it? Um, and then what they use the, the money for. So, um, so yeah, I give a little bit more detail in, in that. Um, yeah, any questions? Yeah, are there any questions from the board? Questions only. I got a couple of questions. So how much of this is coming from the VSR side and how much from the city side? This is all just this is Santa Rosa. Yeah. The um, and then the city matches that, right? So this is our, this is yeah. our amount, and then the city matches that. Um, well, sorry, sorry, this is this is half and half. Half and half. This is the total. So half of this is VSR. So it's split in half. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry. So uh, yeah. And then much. then there's the community event funding that's separate. I didn't do a recap on that. Sure. It's done through the city. So how does the partnership thing work? Noting that a couple or three of these, including I ought to really know the answer since a couple of of our hotels are partner we're partners on the marathon but how does that f work yeah so the, basically we reach out to them and ask you know we reach out to the promoters you know mm -hmm. to um to try to and the hotels to try to get you know some sort of packages put together mm -hmm. um and it goes through our crm and that's that's what Lindsay that's kind of Lindsay's function and as a sales director um and then we market it through social media uh channels and then and so do they as well see. so any hotel could be a, could try to be a partner yeah and they would have access to the same information yep. that all the other hotels have yep that's great mm -hmm. okay got it as well. Do you have, uh, I have a question, uh, Danelle, um, any um, a percentage? Uh, when we fund these events, some, the purpose of funding the event also has to do, or a portion of the funding is actually alloc for allocations related to marketing and promotions. Do you have mm -hmm. a, a number or a figure as to how much went into marketing and promotions in addition to Some whatever of, else they do in relationship to logistics for each event? Yeah, so some of them break it out like that um, and some of them don't. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another thing you know, that I think we could improve on the application process for next year is having them be a little bit more detailed in that if we want it to or even say, or even on the front end, if we want, wanted to say they can only use it for you know these things and, and then they need to give us a detailed report on how they marketed the event. Um, because I did notice in the report, some of them use it for other things that, you know, uh, like, like if you see in here, help with event expenses such as player, water, fruit, lodging, and meals, you know, for one of the events. So, um, you know, if that's something that we want to change, we could do that too. Okay. How, is, how does the city decide whether to use its econ funds? Is it just through this process? I'm just sort of curious about that. It's 50-50, but if VSR committed 200,000 to events, would the city just automatically commit 200,000? Or is there a different kind of process? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, historically, it's only, you know, we split the, the portions, but historically, it's only been 50,000 and 50,000, so capping it at, at, at 100,000. It's just kind of organically happened. Yeah. Sort of, I see. Interesting. Yeah, we could definitely review that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't asking for it to be reviewed. I was just trying to understand how it's done. Yeah, yeah. but that's been the standard since I've been yeah, and this part of this board, and I think even since 2010. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah, I would be open to discussing you know different you know amount if we wanted to do that. Um, this was you know last year. I was my first year, and so that's kind of what was decided. But there have been other events that have come up that you know came outside of the you know the timeline, and so um, you know we like the beer, what was it, the festival, you know, we funded that separately just through VSR. So, because um, we wanted to help get that event off the ground. So, um, 
So yeah. the, these these particular events all came through in an application process. Yeah. And we rate them. Uh, to the BIA, is that right? Correct. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, Got it. We each give them like a, a, a number of, you know, rating on a, like a Liker scale. There's various questions. Um, and then... And then if you see down here, we it, the scores. Sure. Yeah. So who um, who decides what to what to uh, what applications to approve and how much money to allocate? That's how we do it. Is we each look at the applications. So each of us that are involved. Um, so on our on our side, it's um, Peter, myself, um, Lindsay. I think that's it on our side. Um, for BSR and then the city, um, we each review them. I don't have the, all the questions, but it's, you know, how they, you know. Is there criteria that we criteria. follow? Um, yeah. Okay. And there were some that didn't um, get approved for various reasons. It, maybe it wasn't in the city of Santa Rosa or certain things like that. Um, so this board doesn't vote to approve. It's it's done at the, what you might say, is the staff level. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. And that's that is my understanding. This is a change from last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's just I'm only asking. Yeah. Yeah. Understand. No, yeah, totally. How we do things. That, that's uh, we we can go back to the further discussion, but let me chime in because we have a member of the public announced that part where uh, the public is to uh, see if they have any questions. So, but uh, we'll go back to the discussion in just a minute because I do have a couple more things to add. Um, I will now ask uh, for public comment on this item, but we didn't get a chance to hear the item. Um, it's the reporting on event support for SRTBIA. I'm welcome, by the way. Um, then move on to um, board member discussion. Recording secretary, can you please provide instructions for public comments? Uh, yes, if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. I'm seeing no hands raised. Okay, so uh, any further discussion? So, um, yeah, so we revamped the, the event support program because we uh, went ahead and combined it with the community promotions uh, portion of the funding that happens through that program. And we also decided to go with an online application process instead of the paper copies that um, were submitted. Sometimes they would be submitted late. And then uh, we also moved uh, uh, the process to a more internal um, uh, strategy. Uh, prior to that, board members used to do a sort of a round robin and, and vote in a public setting. And uh, we're just trying it this way. Um, it's been pretty successful thus far. And we're now about to close the second cycle. I don't know how many applications we have received, uh, but I imagine there must be quite a quite a lot. Um, and then those will be once again assessed by the internal staff and business center also staff. Uh, there is a criteria, and the eligibility has to do with uh, the event needs to happen in Santa Rosa. I think uh, there were two or three events in the past that would happen outside Santa Rosa. Uh, it needs to um, create overnight stays. Uh, the funding, some of the funding needs to be spent for marketing. And it's again to um, uh, promote economic vitality, um, place making, and so on. So uh, they can also be a nonprofit or a not a nonprofit. Uh, whereas in for community promotions, they all need to be nonprofit organizations. So hypothetically, <clears throat> excuse me, if let's say Country Summer requested a million dollars for a weekend that Santa Rosa sold out anyways, could they still hypothetically receive up to 50%? Or is there some sort of safeguard in place to... I'm yeah, our, our staff, if our staff, you know, I guess, no, I don't. Because they typically. I guess we don't have a, we don't say there's a cap on it, you know, but we do, we do discuss it. We, we, not only do we just look at the numbers on the, you know, the, based on the criteria and the, the scores, then we didn't have a discussion. So. It's also based on how much funding there is. Yeah. There's only $100,000 and there's these other applications in line 
and country summer is asking for a hundred thousand. Well, I remember in years past, some organizations would ask for yeah exorbitant an amount of money, and others, yeah. you know, not so much. That's why we say up to. <laughs> okay. And then, are you tracking? You know, this has been an issue in the past where we've tried to get the numbers, um, the room nights that are actually consumed at the hotels for these events, and then kind of put some weight on that for next for year next when year. they ask. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of started digging into that um, this these last few weeks um, after I started looking at all the event recaps just to kind of get a gauge better because, and that's the other reason that I wanted to kind of them to give more information on their recap that relates to the overnight stays because yeah I, I can look into it but I can't get like a super accurate number you know um so I think that there's a better way to do that in the future for sure and I I, I definitely plan to to dig into that a little bit more yeah and I would agree with that because it's just good to show the numbers but I remember that on the application and I think even on the new online application they do an estimate or maybe not but then on the recap, I right. never saw many other recaps. Yeah, there's going to be a million hotel nights. Yeah. Days and it, yeah. I never see them. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to really get a solid number, though. I mean, so the like Country Summer, for example, you know, or they all have a link to all of our hotels from their website. And so you could, you know, you never know how many people are going to be booking outside of it, but we can at least get them to say, you know, we had this many click throughs, you know from your website and we know the country summer website gets a lot of, you know, hits. And so maybe they don't book that day, but at least it's getting visibility. So there's other ways to gauge the success of, um, the event. I know on the hotel end, at least at my property, you know, we can set up a code in the system, mm -hmm. especially if we're offering them a special rate. Yeah. And then it, after that weekend or whatever, we can yeah. look and see how many room yeah. nights were consumed and, you know, with that discount. Yeah, exactly. And, I have a meeting with the country summer and amateur next week, actually. And so, um, want to talk to them more about, you know, ways that we could, you know, do something like that, you know, where, so we can get a better gauge of how, um, successful it, it was, um, for our hotel. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All right, well, thank you, Janelle, and thank you, everyone. We will now move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, so we have, um, have 4.2. Uh, I titled it Reactivation of Third Street Cinema Site, and we have uh, a discussion of a proposed uh, project to reactivate uh, the Third Street Cinema Site to a hybrid conference slash performing arts center. We have here presenting board member Hugh Futrell, CEO of Hotel E. And our house. Exactly. Our house. Yes, thanks. Well, this is just an informational item. I, I wrote a brief memo about this. I think we all know that that cinema site, the Cinema 6 site has been vacant for a fair number of years now, since early in the pandemic. It's deteriorating, it's a mess. Uh, it's um, it's uh, been owned by the same party since they bought it out of foreclosure uh, back in 2011 from a developer who went bust. And it was operated, of course, as a cinema by the Tokini, the center as entertainment group that owns the Roxy for a period of time. Um, and now uh, it's empty. So in th thinking about the site, uh, it, it occurred to me that here we've got in the middle of Santa Rosa next to a parking garage, right on Third Street, surrounded by restaurants, um, a building or a site that can be turned into additional conference center space, which is a gen generally we're conscious of, we need more of that. Uh, and also in a kind of hybrid, also for some performing arts space. I know, um, Dan Fenton of uh, JLL, actually, and I had discussed with him his views about that uh, last month. And, um, and he said the state of the art is to do hybrid programs so that you maximize the amount of use of the space, maximize the number of people coming in. Um, so we have a, we have an un, a non-binding memorandum of understanding with the owner 
this isn't going to be a development project of my company. I'm really acting more pro bono on behalf of downtown and and uh, potentially other hoteliers, because obviously this would not only benefit downtown, if it was successful, it would benefit hoteliers generally. Um, and it will, there'll be some kind of operating nonprofit, but there has to be due diligence. It's very complex. Is Can the building be adapted to this purpose? We, it appears that the ceilings are high enough to serve as on a performing arts basis. That's good. We can assume that the rest of the building would have to be gutted and reconstructed to meet current energy and structural standards. Could, on the other hand, the building simply be knocked down and uh, a whole new building built there? Would that be a better way to do it? Don't know. Uh, it could be. Uh, the zoning allows you to do almost anything with that property in a very intense way. Um, we don't know that. We don't know who would operate it, although I have had some conversations with a member of the executive committee of LBC, uh, and it is, and there will be some additional conversations with them, and it could be that they could be not not a lessee, but an operator uh, as a satellite center for, for LBC. Don't know. And then there's the whole issue of financing viability. Um, this is a quasi public kind of a project. These are traditionally supported through public grants, other public mm -hmm. sources of income, including hotel, hotel tax dollars. You know, like Monterey, when they redid their center at some 40,000 square feet down there, they, they restructured their, uh, their TOT down there, as you guys may already know. And the farther away you were from the, the attraction, the less you paid as the assessment basis. Theory being if you're right next to it. Like presumably Hotel E would pay more than anybody else would, for instance. But we don't know. And there is no proposal that, that I'm making in, in front of the board here today. I just wanted folks to be aware transparently of what was going on. The city uh, uh, staff is generally aware um, but, uh, and a couple council members kind of like the idea. The chamber board took this up yesterday um, uh, as a potential action to provide the refundable deposit, which is $30,000 on the, on the lease. And the general dis discussion was very positive. So if, when the lease is signed and reviewed, then this non-refundable deposit would probably be used. Um, and it's, it's totally refundable during a six month due diligence. In effect, we all have a six month free look at this property for six months without having to make pay the existing owner anything. The due diligence period though, you know, I mean, it's gonna cost probably at least $100,000 worth of cost between engineers, feasibility study uh, and so on. And I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not recommending that that due diligence period be kicked in until the sources to pay that is identified and, and committed. At some point, it could be back in front of, of this board to talk about that. So that's what I wanted to pass on. Um, there are a few people in the community who are generally aware of this. I already got a call from one person who wanted the ability to put their entity into the performing arts part. and. It's way premature to be making those commitments. And I'm also a little concerned because honestly, if it's a performing arts center, it needs to be, it needs to have enough heft that it can at least attract second tier headliners who would be coming to town from outside the town. Otherwise it's not gonna add any bed nights for us, basically. It'll be a nice attraction, but it won't add bed nights. So we'll, you know, we'll see. So it's open for, questions or conversation, yeah, yeah. whatever. Do we know like how much seating or space would be available? Like if, if it was turned into a performing arts center? Yeah, we don't really know. Um, um, I think I think there's some standard ratios of, of square feet and, and seating when you take right. out the common, the common areas. The ground floor is 20,000 feet. The rest of it is a mezzanine. And so, I mean, in, in, in theory, you would you would hit you might hit as much as twelve hundred who could could be seated. 
but it has to be adaptable to break down into smaller spaces too. Um, and then there's the problem of, although you have a hybrid space, how do you make both conferences and performances physically compatible within the space? Because you know, conferences can't just be a bunch of chairs. Sometimes they can be for lectures, but you know, you need more flexibility in that. People have, designers have um, created these adaptable spaces in which literally the whole seating configuration mechanically can change, but that's very expensive. Now, and also then the question is, is, uh, is even if you have 1,200, is that enough? I mean, I, we, I, this is outside my bailiff, I don't know. Are there any other questions for a uh, member of the trial on the board? Just questions. Okay. Uh, there'll be room for a little further discussions, but I'm gonna go to the public. I will now ask uh, for public comments on this item. Uh, then move on to the board uh, further discussion. Recording secretary, can you please provide instructions for public comment? Uh, if you're attending in person and wish to make a comment, please raise your hand. So with the entire cinema site, the changed? Even if there isn't a proposal yet? Well, it's vacant right now. Completely? Nothing, nothing is going on inside it. The building isn't operating. It's just a building that's empty. The Roxy statement? No, it's not the Roxy. It's it's the uh, old Cinema 6 uh, property, which is uh, off of 3rd Street um, between what used to be the Aleworks restaurant and La Fondita. Yeah, it's kind of tucked back in there as a building. Yeah, you wouldn't notice it unless you knew it was there. And do you think it'll most likely be used for um, something involving tourism or just be changed into something that would be used by people in San Jose? Well, a conference center and performing arts center would be designed to benefit the people who live here and also uh, the hotels that, that, that uh, attract people to stay here, which has an economic effect for the whole city. Yeah. So it's a community uh, benefit project as well as an economic, economic one. Any other questions? And could you also state your name and last name for the, for the record? Oh, um, Marta Arahed. I'm not sure if she reached her three minutes, but... Okay, uh, any further discussion? I mean, Thanks I, for the update. Yeah. It's very exciting. It's super uh, exciting to see how it comes on. Yeah, and if I may, I, I did, uh, there was a fellow, or there's a, there's a party that was interested in looking at the B of A building uh, with the notion of perhaps turning that into some sort of a entertainment center slash nightclub. Mm -hmm. um, but then they figure they, the numbers didn't match in the end, but I think they're still looking around for other areas. I'd be happy to give you their contact information sure. in the event that they would be willing to support something like this. And Probably doesn't fit in this building, but if, you know, if they're a good user that can be fitted in downtown somewhere, that would be a good thing. Right. Yeah. So if you want to send that way or send yeah. it, you know, I can send it around and, and see. Okay. Yeah. Todd, did you have your hand up? Well, I was kind of just wondering if Visit Santa Rosa has had any inquiries like for events or for our area that that space we could actually you know use to draw people into the area for conferences and stuff that yeah. we don't I mean is it something that we don't currently have that I, I can't think of anything I will say that yeah I mean we definitely turn away you know RFPs I mean for large larger you know meetings um, you know that because really, we just have like, the Hyatt and the Flamingo that can handle that size. Right. Um, or, I don't even know. 
that size, that many people. But um, yeah, so they would go to you know hotels outside of Santa Rosa. Um, so Sonoma County Tourism usually will you know take over. Take over, yeah. yeah. Um, so specifically, like I can't think of any right off the top of my head, but yeah, definitely you know large conferences like that. Um, event wise, you know, like more performing arts, um, music, sports, that sort of thing that we would get. We would use. We generally are going out to to get you know to drum up business with them, you know, on the various platforms that we use, like this wouldn't be sports obviously, but you know, we have different platforms like play easy and C event that we're, you know, we're just going, going out and just kind of like looking for events that are looking for venues. Right. Um, so then it would open that up for, for us to be able to start looking at for more events. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So instead of them coming to us, we'd be able to go to them. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you. On, uh, at, at the chamber discussion on this, that, that did came up. I mean, and, and Peter has mentioned to me before that there are organizations that come his way that, that we simply can't deal with. They're not, they're even too big for the Hyatt to deal with. I mean, Hyatt does have some yeah. capacity, of course, and the Flamingo, but not, you know, not a, you know, a dentist convention from Evansville, a regional right. convention. And um, uh, Alicia uh, Benson from, from Keysight was saying, yesterday at the meeting. She was very excited about this because she said, uh, Keysight typically has annual meetings of, um, of about a thousand people, uh, the great majority of them engineers. And um, they struggle sometimes to know where to put it. Sometimes they put it down uh, in the fairgrounds of all places. Like one of the only places. Uh, and then uh, uh, the, the people kind of Many of them don't even stay in mm -hmm. town here, they just drive. Her view is though, that a place like that, they would sell out and take that whole thing. They would probably double their participation because so, demographically, the, you know, the 32 year old engineers who don't necessarily wanna to go to these things anyway, to be in an area where you can go right out and have a drink, coffee, get some entertainment and so on. Um, suddenly it's attractive. And the leisure part of it to bring the family for the yeah, family. yeah precisely so I, I think there could be a big impact but we would have to do a feasibility study to really see so a lot of information right across the street at the chamber of people who've made inquiries over the last 10 years that i'm sure could get extracted to be able to oh yeah help see i could look yeah. at the database yeah. Too, yeah and so fortunately that the city's this size doesn't really have a large facility you know conference center the hyatt flamingo are the usual ones that a lot of people attend or pick, but in terms of capacity, uh, there, there's a challenge there. Yeah. And the, yeah, the fairgrounds, uh, although it offers a lot of space, uh, you know, that site is somewhat outdated and uh, it's unfortunate sure. that when, yeah. Uh, and then we have the city of Stockton, for example, which is comparable somewhat, you know, city. They do have a nice conference center, uh, entertainment center public arts and it's far more achievable than a full-blown yeah uh, convention center obviously you know which we know that stomach kind of tourism is, has a feasibility study to look into that very hard to see how that that's gonna gonna work in my opinion but this might the other thing I, I should mention too that I'm really conscious of at that this site which uh, after all is just you know like 600 feet from us that direction mm -hmm. uh, is also essentially adjacent to the square. And the square was originally designed by, you know, by former city managers very strong on this, to, to lay it out in such a way that it could act as an outdoor performance space mm -hmm. also. So you can begin to see if you've got this indoor facility right there, you might be able to do festivals that include indoor and outdoor functions. Mm -hmm. uh, and suddenly you might have the chance to have a cultural stamp on Santa Rosa's, you know, similar to Ashland or something like that. And suddenly you're going to get a lot more people mm -hmm. coming our way. So on that topic, not to open up a can of worms here, but I have had event promoters come to us and want to host large festival type events on the square, but their qualm with the square is that we can't, we can't close it off. Right. So they can't do ticketed um, sales. So they wouldn't, it would be difficult for them to generate income. So just to throw that out there, but the, oh, that's a policy decision. I know. In theory, this, there, there might be a way to actually do that. So I just thought yeah. I'd throw it out of this group. Cause I know there's, you know, <laughs> yeah. 
just there's um, been a couple. It's an important policy question yeah. when the time comes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And the fact is, if it's a performance, even if you're ticketed, I mean, what do you do? I mean, you if you're sitting in a bench, you know, just on the other side of the fence, uh, you know, are they going to arrest you? I think it's more about the experience too. They can, you know, they've talked about different sort of, you know, like a bottle rock type of thing, right? Precisely, precisely. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are big events in, you know, in public spaces or all around the state yeah. that are ticketed. So yeah. there's a way to solve the problem. I, I believe it. Mm -hmm. It was, they kind of came, you know, late in the game. They wanted to do it this year, but, um, you know, but just for, future thought if they come back. Sure. Right. Thank you, uh, Member Futrell, for that great information. We'd like to hear an update, perhaps, uh, this meeting at, a, at one of our future meetings. Yeah, I'll keep it updated in the next meeting, too. And if anything comes up before then, I'll Absolutely. know if that can be distributed to board members. Excellent. All right. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. We will now move on to the next item. And the next item is department reports. And we actually never have department reports. Um, so that leads me to item number six, which is the adjournment of the meeting. So being adjourned. Thank you all very much for attending. Look forward to seeing you at our next meeting. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much.